Shalom, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. A quick take of our broadcast this evening, friends. United States mission to the United Nations. Uh, they've made official press release today here on October the 12th, 2017. Uh, Ambassador Haley of the United States withdrawal from UNESCO. It says in July, when UNESCO made its latest outrageous and politically based decision designating the old city of Hebron and the Tomb of the Patriarchs as part of the Palestinian territory, the United States clearly stated that this decision would negatively affect our evaluation of our level of the engagement with the organization. The United States will continue to evaluate all agencies within the United Nations system through the same lens. It says the purpose of UNESCO is a good one. Unfortunately, its extreme politicalization has become a chronic embarrassment. The Tomb of the Patriarchs decision was just the latest in a long line of foolish actions, which includes keeping the Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad on a UNESCO Human Rights Committee even after his murderous crackdown on a peaceful protesters. Just as we said in 1984 when President Reagan withdrew UNESCO's U.S. taxpayers should no longer be on the hook to pay for the policies that are hostile to our values and make a mockery of justice and common sense, uh, said Ambassador Nikki Haley. Now, I'd like to point out a couple of things. Putting Bashar al-Assad in this and the Tomb of the Patriarchs at the same time as kind of like bills that are passed in the United States. They start one bill, maybe a great idea, good, good, good uh, information uh, that would help the public. But then they slip in some kind of uh, really stupid bill in there that nobody wants, uh, only to get it passed. They do all everything at one time. Same thing with UNESCO here. Bashar al-Assad is not a problem for the Syrian people, nor is it a problem for him to be part of UNESCO and, uh, of course, the Human Rights Committee. Uh, if anybody should be kicked off, that would include a lot of these other warring nations that have tried to overthrow a peaceful country to begin with. But the issue of the uh, tomb of the patriarchs, Abraham, as most people refer to this, uh, not uh, being taken away from being a Jewish site and made a Palestinian site. I, although I do respect the fact that the Palestinians also, as an Arabic people, have the same forefather, Abraham, as do the Jewish people, we cannot just take and isolate this incident and say that this should be a Palestinian site and not a Jewish site as well. Because clearly, even as you can see on Wikipedia, the site is 2,000 years old. It is inscribed in Hebrew on the walls there. And it is known to be the, uh, the tomb for not only Abraham and Sarah, the, uh, the parents, or at least Sarah and Abraham at this particular case happens to be a Jewish lineage, whereas Abraham and um, Hagar would be for uh, the, our Arabic friends. Now, the Arabic people, though, cannot claim this solely as they're trying to do with UNESCO because not only was Abraham and Sarah buried there, but also Isaac and Rebekah and Jacob and Leah as well. So that is where the, the absurdity definitely comes. Uh, Rachel, too, is uh, buried at the, in the tomb of Bethlehem, not far from there. And there, I know that there's some issue of that being converted as well. And so this is where the issues start coming in. It's, and it's, it's an extreme, you know, but at the same time, because the Arabic people do have the same forefather, Abraham, we don't want to exclude them uh, from the site, but to say it is a Palestinian only site, that would be going to another extreme that is just totally wrong. Uh, also, in other news as well, Pyongyang, North Korea, Sputnik News is reporting here that they vowed to finish the nuclear sword of justice. They don't care what the world community does, what sanctions are passed, who says it, Japan, anybody else, they're going to continue on with their nuclear program and build their missiles and be ready and, you know, in case they don't like the way things are going. Uh, but, you know, just another little thing that I thought was interesting. I decided to take, as, as I was looking through the article here, and one of the sources here highlighted right here, Rodong Sin, Sin Mun, their news agency, I clicked on their site there, tried it in Google, you couldn't get nothing to pull up. So I tried it in a few other search engines, Yahoo, I've tried it in, even tried it in the Russian search engine called Yandex. Well, you know, you can see the links there in the Russian uh, side there, but you know what's funny? The United States doesn't want us to read anything the North Korea has to say. 
Why would that be? You know, I, I don't think that Kim Jong-un is the greatest uh, slice of cheese that's ever landed on the planet. But why is it that when we click on anything to do with North Korea, it says, this site can't be reached? What is the man trying to say that everybody's so afraid of? In fact, the only thing you will find is where they were taking screenshots of some of their news and that stopped on September the 30th. Very interesting, isn't it? Huh. I'm curious to know what this guy is reporting now that our Western leaders don't want us to see. How could it be a threat? After all, he's just one little rogue nation. And if the United States were to decide to try to take it out militarily, it wouldn't be that hard to do. But is there that big of a problem with their freedom of speech reaching American people? Interesting. Or is it just because we're planning on bombing them to, uh, to out of, uh, out of completely out of this world and they don't want anybody to see what's going to happen? That's really my question about it. Erdogan, President Erdogan of Turkey, he says, we don't need you. Talking about the United States, Erdogan accuses Washington of sacrificing relations with Turkey. Well, if the United States really does sacrifice relations with Turkey, which I don't think they are, I think this is only a scapegoat here being used only to uh, promote a bigger agenda over in Syria when the time is right. But nonetheless, after we see what Erdogan's crew does to Americans that are having free speech, or even the Kurdish people that try to speak uh, freely inside of uh, uh, the United States when Erdogan's people are there, I would definitely end ties with the guy. Very much a violent people with no sense of freedom of speech. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.